Hello and welcome to Flying Bobbins. I'm Liz and today I'm going to be talking you through this amazing pattern by Jally. Um, I saw this pattern at one of my suppliers and I immediately wanted to make it. Um, it's called the Nordic Booties or Slippers and the pattern comes with um, everything you need to make boots, slippers and a matching carry bag as well. And there's so many different opportunities of how to make these with different fabrics, mixing together different textures. And really at the moment in lockdown, you cannot have enough slippers. <laughs> Hopefully that won't be the case for too much longer. Um, but definitely, you know, you can make slippers to go with all your other makes. Um, and they're great for gifts as well with Mother's Day coming up. I think it's a lovely gift to make. So I'm gonna talk you through each one of the three um, patterns included. Um, with this. Um, this is available at flyingbobbins.com alongside fabric packs which include everything you need to make them as well in a choice of colours. The other thing worth mentioning about this pattern is that it comes in a really really broad size range um, of 18 sizes so you can make these for children I think from like a seven junior something like that it goes down to um, right up to a size 12 adult so you can make these for yourself um, for your kids you know and it's suitable for both males and females too. I'll talk you through what I've made. So first of all, I made these slippers. Um, they feature, how dirty are those? You can see I've been wearing them um, on the bottom there. They feature a non-slip sole. Um, they've got an elasticated heel made in a rib knit, a printed cotton upper, which is fused with a medium loft interfacing. And they are then fleece lined in a coordinating fleece. So those are the slippers and like I say, you can make them for children, you can make them right up to a size 12 in adults. Then I went on to make the booties. So the slippers I think are the easiest project in this pattern. Um, pretty much, you know, even if you're a complete beginner, you wouldn't find that difficult to make. Um, the slipper, the booties are a little bit more technical. There's a little bit more kind of maybe a more intermediate sewer or a beginner who's wanting to push themselves a little bit further would want to have a go at making these. Um, again, you've got the non-slip on the bottom. I have not taken these off since making them. Um, you've got a cotton upper, a little bound edge at the top, fleece lined, um, and there's a little pull cord, uh, pull tab at the back there. The channels here are elasticated, um, and you've also got the option of adding some ties. So these are just so cute. They kind of have that Nordic look to them. And again, you can just create different looks depending on the fabrics that you make these in. And last but not least, I have got the carry bag, which zips open like this. You've got a handle at the top and a gusset as well, so that the boots can easily fit in there, um, which really kind of makes it a nice gift or nice if you're traveling. Um, I think on the pattern they suggest that these are really great for camping trips. Um, definitely feel like maybe even these, depending on the fabrics, could be great for spa days or bridesmaids if you're wearing matching slippers. Loads of different um, ideas for, for, for why to make these great slippers. So as you can see, I'm really excited about this one. Um, first of all, I'm going to show you how to make the slippers. Um, so I'll open up the pattern and show you what you get inside. So when you open the pattern, you get your front sheet there with information for supplies needed on the other side. And then you get this, which is your um, folded up pattern. And when you first open this, it can be a bit overwhelming. I'll show you why. It's just one giant sheet. And um, this includes everything on this one piece of paper. Let's swivel this round. Whoops. So you've got all your pattern pieces printed 
and all of the gradations are colour coded, which is really good. So by that I mean the different um, sizes that you would want to cut. So this line here would be the smallest size and then this one would be the biggest size here. Um, so there's a lot of sizes and as you can see, actually it's interesting to look at because you can see how much the difference between the children's sizes um, is quite a big difference and the adult sizes it's not such a big difference. Um, but anyway, yeah, so you've got all of the sizes, all of the pattern pieces there. And then also on the same sheet of paper, you've got your cutting out plans and you've got all your instructions. So the first thing that I did when I opened this is I thought to myself, right, I, if I'm going to get my head around this pattern, I need to get organised. So um, the first thing that I would suggest you do to avoid getting into a hot mess is just to cut round each element. You don't have to cut it out to size, but just separate everything so that you have a pile with all the pattern pieces meant for the boots, a pile with all the pattern pieces meant for the slippers, and a pile with the pattern pieces meant for the bag. And then another pile just with all of the instructions and information. And then it's a lot more straightforward and easy to manage. So I'm gonna show you what I did. Okay, so here's, that was the before, here's the after. So this is once I've organised my pattern, this is how it looks. So I've got an A4 envelope to put everything in afterwards, just to keep it all together. And then I've cut out the pieces needed for the bag. There's just two pieces, the handle and the bag itself. And the instructions for the bag are printed onto that pattern piece. That's the simplest one of all. That's just two pieces and there are no different sizes. It's just the one size. Then I put together, and I just paper clipped it together, the pieces needed for the slippers. And you've got the sole, whoops, the heel, and the upper. So this is... They're just the three these are the three pieces that you need and as you can see on each pattern piece they've put a picture where, the, where it's the slipper or they've put a picture of booty if it's meant for the booty. Um, it's a French Canadian company so you've got your um, pattern notes in French and English as well. Um, but yeah, so I haven't cut out my size that I need. I've just roughly cut around the edge just to say, you know, right, those are my pieces that I need if I'm going to make the slippers. Um, and I'm just going to put them together because you actually get the sole for the slippers and the sole for the boots is different as well. So it's good to sort of have everything cut out and in its appropriate bundle. So that's my slippers bundle. And then finally, <clears throat> I've got my booty bundle. <laughs> So that's what on it, the back, so the back leg, um, you've got your front leg, and as you can see, you've got a picture of a booty, so you know that it's the booty pattern you're looking at. Um, you've got your piece for your loops, if you're going to do a plain tape, the little um, pull loop at the back of the boot, the, the upper, or the top part of the boot, there's a lot of pieces with the boot. <laughs> the top edge of the binding um, and the toe, the, the toe band, and then the sole. So you've got quite a few pieces there for um, the boot. It's a real fun thing to make this, this boot, actually, I have to say. Um, it's not like anything I've made before. And I love sewing new things. So those are, that's my little pile for my slipper boots there. And like I said, I haven't cut out the size, but I've just put it into its own pile. And then with all the information, I just stapled it together. So I've got the front cover there. And then I've got the information about supplies needed. And I've just, there are little bits that are really important that these little squares, this is the sizing guide, the bit telling you how much elastic you need, finished measurements. So I just print stick them onto the back. And then I just stapled that bit of information. So I've got all of the general information in one pile there. And then I've got my instructions for how to make the boots. So I just cut them out however 
just so that they would fit nicely and put them in the right order. You can tell because the, the instructions aren't numbered, but the pictures are numbered. So just put them in the right order and staple them together. And then the slippers, which is just a couple of sheets, again, just chop them out and staple them together. So now inside my A4 envelope, everything is organised. And whenever I want to make these slippers or booties, it's dead easy to get my head round the bits that I need. Right, so the first thing that you're going to need to do is decide the size that you're going to make. And you've got a shoe size guide here. Um, you've got your children's table and your junior table and your adult's table. And there's different um, columns there. So you've got your um, US sizes. These are different from UK sizes. You've then got um, your Euro sizes and then the jelly size, which is different again. So the jelly size is simply that your foot length in centimetres. And um, what they say is the best thing to do is to measure your foot. So you're going to put your heel against a wall. I would just stand on top of a piece of paper, draw around my toes with my heel to the wall and then measure how long is my foot. That's how I do that. And then I, for my own measurements, that's what I did. And I found out that my feet were, what was it now? 24 centimetres long, I think, um, which equates to a size 38 in European sizes, which I know is a UK five. So I know that's, that's about right. And um, so, yeah, so I just cut out, you know, the, the jelly size 24 for my own. So you just need to measure your own feet in centimetres. If your feet are 28 centimetres long, that's a euro sort of 43. You know, um, you can look maybe online to convert these euro sizes back to UK sizes just to check that that sounds about right. Um, if you're making these for somebody whose feet you don't have <laughs> to measure, uh, just, you know, go find out what shoe size they are. UK shoe size, translate that back to the Euro size, um, which a lot of people know anyway, because a lot of shops do both. And then you can see which which jelly size. And I say they come up true to size. Right then, so I'm gonna make these for Tim, my hubby, because um, I've made my own and he's jealous. <laughs> he's very excited actually, quite like seriously excited that I'm making him slippers today. Um, so I just, Put this um, in the back of the envelope against the wall. He stood with his foot and measured it. And I just put a line around the edge of his toe. So take a measurement at the longest part. That's 28 centimetres. And then I look at the conversion table here. So I'm going to make a jelly size 28 for Tim. Um, but I just want to see, just um, that would equate to a Euro 43, which is exactly right, actually. So I'm going to make my size 28 slippers and these are the three pieces needed, the top of the foot, the sole and the heel. But I don't want to cut my pattern because I want to use it to make some for my little boys and for myself. So you've got so many sizes on this pattern, it's a shame to cut everything out and then not have use of the other sizes. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace them. I'm not a fan of tracing as in I just don't like doing it. <laughs> but um, with smaller things like this, actually, it's not too bad. It's quite easy. Um, so I've started off by flattening out the pattern pieces and I've blue tacked them to my surface. I'm avoiding any creases on my table so I would get in the way. And I'm actually going to use, I haven't got any um, tracing paper, I'm going to use Sainsbury's grease proof. I recommend it highly, both for baking and sewing. <laughs> So I'm going to just um, cut the piece out. It's, as you can see, it's plenty big enough. It's nice and see-through. And, um, you know, if you haven't got uh, sewing, I do, I am going to stock some tracing paper for sewing patterns. But if you haven't, can't get your hands on any, then just tracing paper for small projects like this is cool. It works. Used it before. So I'm just going to, I've blue tacked down my, my pattern piece. I'm just going to pop a bit of tape in each corner to hold down. You don't want anything moving, beg your pardon, that's the children. You don't want anything moving around um, when you're tracing. You want it to be all nice and flat and smooth. And it's a real easy one because it's only 
three pieces and they're all quite small pieces. I'm going to use my, I've got this pattern master that I've had for years. You don't need to use a pattern master. You could just use a ruler um, to help you trace. So the first thing that I'm going to mark on is the straight grain line. It's incredibly important and you don't want to forget it. So always mark on your straight grain line. And then before I forget, the second piece of information I want to add is the size. So that's 28. Otherwise you might forget and then you'll kind of come back to it a year later and you'll think, gosh, what size did I do? Now, find line number 28, which is this green one here. And I am just going to trace with my pencil carefully round that green line. It's very helpful that the lines are colours. If you want, you can use, you know, I could have used my curve there, but if you come across some straight bits, you can use a ruler. But I think on the sole here, it's pretty much all um, slightly curved lines. And just take your time. When you come, you've got on this pattern, you've got notches. And these notches are marked like either hexagonal shapes or triangles away from the pattern. But that's a bit of a pain when it comes to cutting out. So what I will do instead is I'll draw a line across where those hexagonal tabs or those triangular notches are. And I shall just sort of draw them to the inside. So you can just draw a triangle coming to the inside instead. Um, that makes it much easier. Draw that hexagon coming to the inside. And you can trace these markings onto your fabric when you've cut out. That's going to make it a lot easier because then you're not going to be cutting out around all these fiddly little um, triangles and what have you. Because especially when you're um, cutting fleece, it's uh, quite fiddly to do that. And if you're using a rotary cutter, well, you know, they're going to get lobbed off straight away. So I'm just going to trace round. And then do this with each of the three pattern pieces. Every time I come to a notch, I'll draw the triangle in. Concentration. It's absolutely pouring with rain. It's the perfect day for sewing. No desire to be outside whatsoever. Well, it was it stopped now, but it was pouring a minute ago. Stay indoors, cosy and warm, and do some sewing. Try to be as accurate as you can. It's kind of do this in good light as well. Um, the colours do help you that you can see the line you're tracing. But that's my um, soul of my pattern trace. So I'll show you how that looks. And then I'm going to do all of the others. Move that out of the way. There you go. So you can see I've just got that line trace there. And then I want to put on there any information that's um, important. So I should just write on there that this is the jelly, slippers, sole, and then I want to um, cut two in outer and cut two in lining. So I'm just transferring any information from here onto here. Um, Perfect, and I've got the size 28 and I've got my grain line. So I'm going to trace off the other two bits and I shall be back. And there we have it, the three pieces I need for my slippers. The upper part or the top of the slipper, the sole and the heel.